Everyone's always like, Rocky, Rocky, are you into the stock market? And this is what I have to say. If you told me one year ago that this was going to be me, I'd laugh in your face. I'd call you a disgrace and go back to just sipping my tea. If you told me one year ago that I'd be in on this fad, I'd roll both my eyes. I'd be full of denies and I'd probably get really mad. If you told me one year ago this is where I'd end up, I would walk out the bar, I would leave in my car, and the whole scene would be real abrupt. But now I'm in to stocks. On Reddit, we call it the stonks. I check every day. Call me Warren Buffet. All this day trading really does rock. With GameStock, we took down Big Hedge. Buy it all up. That was our pledge. Sure, we're all unemployed, and Vladimir is annoyed, but us stonk bros, we live on the edge. Ask me about Robin Hood. I'm the expert who's up to no good. Invest in the Doge, watch the Dow and the Jones, and hold please, we all know that you should. For our chant, we say straight to the moon. Elon's leading us there really soon. But they're seizing my house, and I'm without a spouse. That's okay, we'll hit 10 cents by June. Welcome to the Rocky Rundown. Before we get to my guest, you get to learn a little bit about my week. This week felt a little hopeful in terms of the old vaxaroony. Lots of my up close and personals are getting the vaccine. Low key brag, but also, you know, I don't have it, so not really a brag. But it's looking good for all of us. I was reading this article. Well, it was an Instagram post, but it had a lot of words, which I'm told articles also have a lot of words. So same, same. And it said COVID will just be a thing from now on once we all get the vaccine. So doctors will be able to tell you if it's the flu or COVID. And that is wild to me. COVID just inserted himself, yes, himself, don't at me, into our lives like forever. COVID is like finding out you have a secret sibling and they're kind of embarrassing and don't look like you, but you can't avoid them because they moved into the place next door. That's COVID. Another thought that I had this week, do you guys think that the creator of Autocorrect is just ducking with us? Hotel Cecil is on Netflix. Check that out. Could they have done it in three episodes? Yeah. Is it four episodes? Absolutely. But it was really interesting. What I got out of it is that it's a really scary hotel where a lot of horrible things happened, but would I ever stay there? Hell no. I'm wild, but I draw the line at murder dens. DM me if you'd stay there and tell me a reason why. If I get some good, compelling responses, I'd love to share them on next week's episode. I'm also interested in what kind of sick ducks are listening. I have a shout out this week to Grant Klein. I was a guest on his podcast, Living in Lockdown. Grant is a super gracious and kind host. His podcast is all about different people's journeys through the pandemic, so check that out. This Wednesday at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I'll be doing another episode of Wild Wednesdays on IGTV. If you can't tune in for the live, I will post it after. Who doesn't love that, huh? Speaking of guests, my guest this week is Vanessa Jackson. Stand-up comedian, writer on A Little Late with Lily Singh, an all-around good woman who I thoroughly enjoyed speaking with. Her wild word was spelunking. If you don't know what that word means, don't look it up. I didn't beforehand, so go on this ride with me, baby. If you haven't done so already, please like, share, and subscribe to the podcast. Thank you to those who have written reviews on Apple Podcasts. It does make a difference. Follow me on Instagram and TikTok at Wild Nights with Rocky. And enjoy my wild night conversation with Vanessa Jackson. Vanessa, welcome. Thank you for doing the podcast. Yeah, thanks for having me. This is awesome. Good, good. I'm glad you're here. So I know you're in New York, but you're original. You're originally a Cali girl, right? I am, yeah. I'm yes. originally from Rancho Cucamonga. I just say Los Angeles because it's easier. <laughs> Rancho Cucamonga. So I know in the movie Next Friday, I don't know if you're familiar with, but they're from, is that where they're from? 
Like he goes yeah. to visit uh, his cousin Day Day. Yeah, I always can tell like people's like pop culture reference points. People either say Friday, bring it on or workaholics. And I'm like, okay, I know what type of person you are. <laughs> yes, but you know what's funny? I'm a little bit of both because not workaholics so much, even though I think it is a funny show, but I watched Bring It On this weekend. There you go. Okay, yeah. you know. Um, great movie. My roommate and I were just like trying to have like a 90s movie night. So we watched Bring It On, American Pie 1 and 2, but I know it originally from next Friday. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Okay. OG. OG. So you uh, came over to New York. How long ago did you join us in New York? It's technically two years, like a little over two years, but mm-hmm. like since COVID's happening, it feels like just a year. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, technically legally two years. Well, I'm glad you stuck it out here. A lot of people fled, which was their choice, but it's, it makes you kind of different when you stick it out here through the pandemic. Yeah, if I was smart enough, I might have fled. I spent like the first three months thinking this was going to end in like a week. Yeah, yeah. I think that was how I realized. Yeah, by the time I realized how serious it was, it was like, well, I guess I'm here now. Yeah, (laughs) stuck here now, uh, wiping down my groceries, but. Yeah, exactly. I do see the light at the end of the tunnel. My mom was vaccinated today. I had some friends vaccinated. So I, I, I am seeing the light. Yes, slowly but surely. It feels like it's a long light, but uh, we'll get there. So speaking of light, we can talk about some lighter things, or maybe they're heavier. See, guys, I don't know Vanessa's story right now, but I know she gave me the word spelunking. That was her wild word. I haven't looked it up because I feel like I knew what I thought I knew what the word meant. And I was like, you know what? It'll just be better to not look it up and have her tell me. So Vanessa, the, the floor is yours. Tell us your wild story about spelunking. Oh, I love it. I'm glad you didn't look it up. That's yeah. fun. I, I had to learn the word too. Okay, so spelunking means, and people who are like really outdoorsy will probably correct me, uh-huh. but like caving or like climbing through caves. Oh. Um, yeah. So that is what my story is about. I actually went to school in Colorado. So I was okay. there for four years, which I love Colorado. I went to school out in Lakewood, which mm-hmm. is like uh, 15, 20 minutes outside of Denver. Um, so it was a very fun place to be. Like I said, I'm from the city. I now live in the city. I love the city. It's a lot more like quiet, laid back there. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot of outdoorsy things to do and I'm not, not super outdoorsy, not my (laughs) jam. Um, so, but I, I'm also like a person who's like, I will do anything once. Like you're down for stuff. Yes. I'm Mm -hmm. like, let's try it out. Let's see. And then, uh, if we need to never do that again, like skiing, I learned never again in my life. Did it once. That's it. That's the Same only time me. I will ever. Same for me. Good. Oh, <laughs> blessings. Did you, did you like not know how to ski the first time you went? Absolutely not. I didn't know how to ski. I went about 10 years ago and I was an absolute embarrassment, like grown, shouldn't have been on a pair of skis. So the next time I went was in Colorado and I was like, you know what? I'm down here. You guys ski. I got a blue moon. I'm chilling. Yeah. See, that's smart. I went with yeah. girls who had like been before and they were like let's skip the little bunny slopes and let's just go on the regular course and Mm -mm. not athletic that is another story for part two we'll do a part two one day (laughs) I can't wait (laughs) yeah so good but my spelunking story okay so there's a thing we just called it caving in college where Mm -hmm. basically you climb up a mountain and then you climb inside of the mountain and then you climb around in the mountain and up inside and around. Yes. Like you hike to up a mountain and then you hike inside the mountain and then you crawl through these caves. Mm -hmm. And so they were like, do you want to go caving? And I was like, okay, knowing in my head that I'm afraid of heights, Mm -hmm. but we decided to do it with like our entire like freshman dorm floor, which again, as I just explained, never bring 20 girls up a mountain. (laughs) (laughs) That should have been our first clue that like this shouldn't have gone down. Right. I don't know why we thought this was a field trip activity. Yeah, um, it was not. Uh, the reason that we got 20 girls too is because we also brought one of the QRAs from a different floor who's like six, seven basketball player, like super yes. tall. Yes. <laughs> yeah, so of course all the girls were like, who's going? He is? Okay, cool. We'll be yeah. there. Um, so all 15 girls, he didn't end up with any of us. Um, Naturally, no. <laughs> of course, of course he didn't. Why would he, you know? Um, so we arrived his mountain. The fun fact that we learned about him again, this man is six seven. He was also afraid of height. So we brought someone for safety <laughs> who was mean? definitely, yeah, who was definitely afraid. So, yeah. but he didn't mention that till we got to the mountain and he was like in the back, like <laughs> hyperventilating. Oh my God. And I was like, 
did nobody else get like why did he come I don't I actually don't know to this day I think they had to like force him to come right I don't know what his thought process was all of us not in our right mind can I ask about the ladies that went was there a leader amongst you there was a okay there was leaders but they were like the kind of girls who were like you know how like when you do a new activity there's the people who are like willing to explain it to you and then there's people who are like they think they're explaining it but really they've done it 18 million times and they're like why is everybody going so slow yes Um, I do yes so they were like those kind of girls sweet sweet girls but they were like we're climbing up a mountain we're climbing in it no explanation just like this is what we're doing yeah I hope everybody knows what they're doing right (laughs) and none of us did so yes we had like two ish leaders Mm -hmm. um so when you go caving you're supposed to bring like headlamps with you um which is another sign I was like that I shouldn't be doing this I didn't think (laughs) about like we went at night too like 9 p.m to a mountain so we needed to use the headlamps to hike up a mountain yeah there's no like it was insane so we Mm -hmm. climb into this mountain uh super tiny super squished right again we only had two girls who knew what they're doing and this one man who again is six seven and if you've never been inside a cave they are not made for six seven no 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 it's a Um, kind of (laughs) yes and like a fit like buff six seven man Mm -hmm. um and then there's me who if you couldn't tell am black and have like black hips and curves right so fitting in like no they don't you know, Shakira said it. <laughs> they do not lie. And no. this was the moment of truth, in fact. So we're like climbing through this thing. A line of girls, 15 girls, were trying to like get around this cave. You have to <laughs> climb on your like arm through things. You have to climb over rocks. Yeah. Um, so we're climbing through this thing. We get to this area called, uh, it's called the devil's butt crack. The devil's butt crack. Yes. Yeah. Which is, okay, if you can imagine, it's two slabs of rock that are about okay. the size of a human body, hopefully if your body is small. Okay. Um, and so it's this devil's butt crack. You have to, okay, there's an edge and then the ground is maybe like four feet below. You have to wedge your body in between it and climb down three feet, like just using your back pushed against the back of it and this so it's very claustrophobic this is fun uh, it, <laughs> thank you that is Rocky we are the same person that like, was what? the yeah the minute I got there I was like people do this for fun why I'm definitely afraid number one number two you want me to almost hurt myself like almost endanger myself now with the the line of girls I know you said big man was in uh-huh. the back he was hiding. yeah but where did you fall in the girls? Were you kind of in the front? Were you all the way in the back or were you squished in the middle? Okay, so here's the thing. Like I said, I'm afraid of heights. Mm-hmm. So I was this big man. I was like, listen, <laughs> me and you, we're going to do this together. He refused to do the devil's butt crack. He was like, no. <laughs> was like, fast. So there was, yes, yes, yes. So the girls who had known the way, they, they had like an alternate um, like way to go down. Very... <laughs> second fun fact is like if you're not going to crawl down the other way was even more difficult it was either like you could risk dropping or you could squeeze underneath boulders <laughs> and you say your risk dropping yeah well because the the devil's butt crack thing there was no ground you just like stepped off the edge and then pressed like your whatever this part of your body is called and your back. So you had to like, does that make sense? You had yes, to like- Yes, it does. Leave. You had to, you're almost like a magnet kind of, but there's no yes. suction cups. Yes, like a okay. rock wall, but without the rock. Just like, let's hope to God <laughs> that it works. My roommate actually, my roommate Hannah, bless her soul, is the sweet. And I always, to this day, she survived. I always tease her about this because when I got down underneath, um, she was coming down and she was like, I can't do it. I can't do it. So her theory was to just drop, which let me tell you, would not recommend. No, I think no. She, she definitely scratched her knee. I think she might have sprained her ankle or just hurt her ankle. It was it was by far the most crazy move, but it was classic Hannah. Classic um, Hannah. I was just going to yeah. say that. <laughs> <laughs> you, were, you were like typical Hannah. Classic um, Hannah. Yeah. I actually do say that when I don't know someone and someone tells me something they do, I'm always like classic so-and-so. So I literally was going to say classic Hannah, but oh, I, I was right. <laughs> it's just the go-to. It's like yeah. classic them. That just seems yeah. like such a them thing. Yeah. Um, so she just like straight up dropped. So I'm down there with me and like six, seven guy. Yeah. And um, I, she's not okay. And uh, she like manages to get out. 
So we like finally crawl our bodies through this entire thing yeah. and get to where the out was supposed to be with these two girls who were like Colorado natives. And they're mm. like, oh man, there was not an earthquake. There had, it had been like after winter. So there was like uh, a shift, I guess, in the mountain. There had okay. recently been like an avalanche or something. So the path that we were supposed to get out didn't exist anymore. It was just rocks there. Yeah. So they were like, everybody wait here. We'll go see if there's another way out of this mountain. <laughs> because you oh. can't climb back up the devil's butt crack because that's not a thing. No, that's not an option. No, <laughs> you get it. You're starting no. to put the pieces together. <laughs> this is not it an option. One of those, yeah, one of those nights where I was like, why, why did I decide to come? Why did I think that this was going to be a good idea for anyone? Um, so we're like crawling through this thing. And uh, basically my friend had sprained her ankle. We finally found like an out. We were in this mountain for maybe three and a half hours. So like, it's about 1230 at this point. Yeah, it mm. was a good chunk of time that mm. we were down there to the point where I was like, mm, are we going to make it out? I don't know. Right, we right. can't, uh, I literally like cell phone services don't work inside of a mountain. And yeah. also that is going to be, I was like this, the only good news is it's probably going to be like a Quentin a Tarantino film because like 15 girls dying together in a mountain is pretty classic. <laughs> the man will still be the uh, star of the movie, but obviously <laughs> that would be the only part is he would look like the hero. Like, yeah. hold on, ladies, <laughs> when he was like curled up in a ball, right? Sawing his leg off to like save Hannah and then hopping yeah. through the hero. <laughs> Isn't that so sad? Yeah. <laughs> 100 percent the fact um, i would have died first obviously i was one of a few black women so. but you were gonna be like i would have died first virgin yeah. <laughs> Me, that's probably. why i'm spl that's why i'm splunking yeah <laughs> human sacrifice oh it's crazy so we finally figure out a way out like yeah. we get out which is lucky but we had to like carry my friend down because she had hurt herself and it was funny i learned that day i do not um do not ask me in a crisis situation to help. I was just like humming. <laughs> I found out like when things get really bad, I just hum music. And I was just like humming songs and was like, let's hopefully get you down this mountain. Uh, and I was no help whatsoever. She survived. We all survived. I don't know how we survived, but somehow we did it. And uh, that is my wild night. Can I just say, I picture you humming, but all of a sudden, while you guys are like carrying Hannah out, you just have a fan, a church fan pops up, and you're slowly humming like Jesus walks <laughs> while you fan it yourself. Might have, low key, it might as well have been that. Like legit, I might as well have just been singing like Jesus walks. I don't think I helped at all. Oh I like, was like, yeah, you can lean on me. But I was like terrified. I'm already afraid of heights. Like yeah. it was a steep mountain down. It was, yeah, I, I should have just been singing hymns, yeah. <laughs> like old hymns. <laughs> oh, the, the hymns, old and new, you got them all. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Now, I know you said you tease Hannah sometimes about this still, and she was your roommate, but are you close with any of the other girls, or big man, as we call him? <laughs> no, but I know, big man, classic. I am not close with him. I still talk to Hannah a lot, and uh -huh. I would love to say that this was the last time that I ever did any sort of caving or like outdoor activity mm -hmm. in Colorado, but it was not. Um, we still chat and we still joke about that. I did like also white water rafting out there, which is another thing that I would, uh, have you ever been white water rafting? Absolutely not. <laughs> I learned from all these experiences in Colorado that I need to ask more questions about what certain activities entail. Mm -hmm. uh, like I showed up to white water raft and it's literally a raft, which sounds so stupid. Right. But I thought it was like a boat and they're like, no, you sit on the edge and just hold on. And I was like, Why do people do this? I couldn't survive in Colorado, not as a full fledged adult. <laughs> like, there's uh -huh. just no way. I really think that it's great that you did immerse yourself in the Colorado culture, though. Yes, I feel when when in Denver, do as the Den Denverans, Denverians, Denverans, Denveridians, <laughs> Denverans, the Denverites, the Denverites. Um, do, I like that. <laughs> yes, yeah, do as they do. Uh, yeah, I mean, there. I love that state. There's like so much beauty out there and so yeah. much to see, but it very much is a place that's like, if you are not outdoorsy, you probably will not have anything to do. It ain't happening. Yeah. No. Yeah. The hiking, the like, all of it is like definitely precedented on like, you should sort of kind of be physically like active if right. you live there. Unless right. you're in Boulder, because they are just stoned out of their mind. But really? outside of Boulder, yeah. How that's far like is the, South Park? 
Oh, that's a good question. I don't know. Oh, okay. Yeah. I was going to really ask if question. it's actually like a town of cartoons. <laughs> you <laughs> cross the line and you just become animated as soon as you get there. That would be crazy. <laughs> You're like, about Breckenridge? Have you been to Breckenridge? Yeah, I have been to Breckenridge. Breckenridge is a place where people do a lot of like skiing, snowboarding. Mm -hmm. And like I said, I just went that one time and was like, never again. I don't yeah. know why skiing was the thing I said no to, even though that's the like socially acceptable activity, but caving I did like multiple times. <laughs> Well, I can see why you would say no to skiing. That that feels like uh, when you're spelunking, <laughs> you have a little more control of your body. You don't have these poles that are dictating where you go. I think you're right. I think that's what it is. Because like I learned in that cave, like at one of the points when I got like stuck underneath because yeah. my hips, like literally I was like, I physically don't think I could do this. And I yeah. started like slightly hyperventilating. Yeah. And I think I learned like, if I feel like I'm trapped or like I don't have control, that's when I get stressed out. Is what okay, I'm like. yeah. Yeah, and but then when you're doing the like skiing with the poles and stuff, I was like, this does not make sense in my brain. <laughs> None yeah. of it um, at all. I love that people are having fun with this, but uh, not, not for me, not my calling. <laughs> no, and a lot of people who are skiers have been on skis since they were two years old. Yes, especially in Colorado. It's like, if you were not born with a snowboard on your feet, like, what are you even doing? Although there's a weird rivalry between snowboarders and skiers, which I really? find so strange. Yeah. It's like you either do one or you do the other. And like, I had one friend or another roommate who like skied and she's from Colorado. And I was like, oh, do you ever snowboard? And she was like, no, we don't talk about that. And I was like, okay, cool. Isn't it interesting that there's so many subcultures around the world, but in America too, there's so many subcultures and us as outsiders, not skiers, not snowboarders, we could say something innocent like that. Like, oh, you know, I bet you ski and snowboard. And then someone gets so offended and you have no idea that there's this rivalry. Yeah. That is like the funniest thing ever. And I love that is when you mention something and people are like, that's not to me. And you're like, oh, yeah, hey, sorry. I just thought that was like a typical hand in hand thing. And I was like, you either snowboard or you ski. I keep wanting to say skateboard. <laughs> <laughs> don't even get us started on the skateboarders. <laughs> no, don't even. Ryan Sheckler, what happened to him? Where'd he back. go? Where'd he go? I know. <laughs> I thought he was going to be bigger than Tony Hawk. And nope. No. I saw a funny Tony Hawk <laughs> tweet. Uh, I think he was talking about getting vaccinated or something with his kids. I'm butchering the tweet because I didn't know we would be talking about Tony Hawk. <laughs> Surprise. Respect it. <laughs> um, and, and somebody was like looking at his card or his kid's card or something. And they're like, Oh, are you Tony Hawk? And he was like, yes, I'm Tony Hawk. And they're like, no, you're not. I'll find the tweet. Stop. That's <laughs> hilarious. That is embarrassing. And yet, like I would probably, he's one of those people who almost exists. This is going to sound super creepy as like a mythical figure, Yeah, you know, where you're like, Tony Hawk he you know he's still alive but you like don't really hear about him often right I feel like every sport especially sports in my head like if I know about you you must be really big because I don't mm -hmm. pay attention to anything so like yes. skateboard is like Tony Hawk golf is Tiger Woods you know so it's like he is sort of like a legend of like also the name Tony Hawk nobody has the last name Hawk is that a right. stage name or is that his real name do you skateboarders know? have stage names <laughs> I think skateboarders. These are the questions. Now we're speaking our language. Um, <laughs> do they have a stage name? What's like, their call time? <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> I I think it's his real name. That makes sense. That would track. Yeah, I'll you know what I mean. Later. Yeah, Tiger yeah. Woods. He got into a bad accident yesterday. Did you hear about that? Yes, he did. Luckily, he's okay. Which yeah. is that insane. Very yeah. scary. We need you, Tiger. You can't go anywhere with, it. you know what I mean? I know. There's just been too much loss. Every p issue of People Magazine last year was just like literally um, someone dying. And I was like, I we can't handle it anymore. Yeah. It, yeah. It's turning into X People Magazine. <laughs> you know yeah, what I, mean? I know. Exactly. It's <laughs> All right. So you're living in New York now. You're here. You're mm -hmm. hanging. Are you still working on Lily Singh? I am. Yeah. Which has been really fun. I'm yeah. working on season two. We like so pre-tape and bank a ton of episodes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's been, it, she has like a really cool, unique voice. I wasn't yes. super familiar with her before like writing for the show. Mm -hmm. Um, But it's been like really, really cool. I'm really into like pop culture and just Me like too. cultural things. And mm -hmm. so they 
love to indulge just like my weird uh, things. We did like a segment called pour one out where we okay. like to pour one out for like celebrities who have found love. Like we did Michael B. Jordan, Riz Ahmed. Oh. Um, we're doing Shailene Woodley. And I, when I first pitched it, I was like, this is going to be weird. Um, go with me on this. <laughs> and they were like, yeah, let's do it. Sure. Good. So they're really, really cool. Yeah. About like indulging my weird intricacies, which is awesome. Well, you know, they hired you for a reason. They like your voice. They want you to have your voice heard. So yeah, be proud of the stuff you're putting out there and realize like you're there for a reason. That is so, mm, Rocky, that is so good. I feel like in the imposter syndrome of it all is always it's, like, it's I, real. Yeah, it, it really is. The minute this is like my first official like TV writing job. Uh-huh. And so like the minute I got in there, I was like, I feel like they made some accent. Like the first two weeks I would pitch things with a tone of like, so here's the thing. Are you guys going to realize that this was a mistake or? So here's the thing. My desk is packed up. I'm ready to go, but I do have this one idea. Do you want to hear me out really quick? (laughs) Yes, yes, exactly. I will, I will leave and never return. If you hate it, I get it. I understand. I'm on borrowed time, Mm -hmm. Uh, but here's this weird idea. No girl, you're there for a reason. They, you're, they want your voice to be part of that show. That's why you got hired. Keep, keep pitching your fun ideas. You know what I mean? (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Which is the fun of it. I mean, it's been uh, just a cool writing for late night is like, so I've never written so much in my life. You're just yeah. like constantly writing every week. You're like constantly pitching. I was mm-hmm. like joking with my sister when I first started the job because I was like, we have to, we have to have a new pitches this week and new pitches this week. Yeah. And like every week you have a really good meeting and you're like, yes, I nailed it. And then you're like, wait, I have to do it again tomorrow. What? Yeah. <laughs> What's the, the schedule like? Is it like an eight to 10 kind of deal? 10 to 12? Yeah. Eight to 10. Um, right now, remote because of everything going on so it's a lot of like zoom meetings Mm -hmm. of just like pitching brainstorming um just throwing ideas against the wall everybody in the room is like so great so smart so talented Mm -hmm. so that like really helps to like up your game and feel like okay I can't slack uh because everybody else is so funny and like so good um so yeah it's been like a crazy experience but for sure fun now we know the way that social media works and entertainment works. We're all like news is changing every second, especially pop culture Uh news. So if you are someone who's really into pop culture and now your job is based on knowing what's going on in pop culture, how do you stay on top of everything that's going on while balancing being a writer on the show? Oh man, it's so weird. It's interesting because like I have had to like turn my brain into like, even when I'm not working, I'm working like yes. constantly being like, if I see something on Twitter, my natural reaction would just be like, oh, this is happening. Um, and like not, I, before this, I worked in actually entertainment news and one yeah. time uh, my boss, something popped off on Twitter and I had seen it and I was like tweeting about it. And then my boss came in and it was like breaking news. I forget what it was. And he was like, oh, this is happening. Vanessa, can you write it up? And I was like, oh yeah, I just saw that. And he's like, why did you not tell anyone about it? (laughs) So I have to like think about that in the sense of this too, where I'm like, oh yeah, when I see something, that's something that we could possibly use for the show. So that kind of helped me to tune my brain to be like, instead of just seeing something, because usually, you know, you like send a funny thing to your sister or like send it to your brother and you're like, oh, this is funny or it's in the group chat. And I like have to remember like, oh, if these are things people are talking about, then this is probably something you should bring to your job. <laughs> and your work. My job, yeah. Yeah, but sometimes things slip through the crack and I forget. It'll be like someone got married and I'll be like, oh yeah, I'm not going to mention that I saw that an hour ago. <laughs> yeah, 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 <laughs> I can't I do that. Now, yeah. um, now you're a stand-up as well. Yeah. Are you working on that? Or is that kind of like, okay, I'm, I'm on the show, I'm working on this, so stand-up is kind of going to take a back seat or are you able to balance both? Yeah, it's weird. I mean, the pandemic changes everything. Stand up right now. I'm still doing like open mics when I can outside Mm -hmm. in parks. I haven't done like any indoor ones yet when there was like rooftop shows and stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, I was doing a ton of those. Uh, I I think that I always try to maintain like having the focus on like building my own brand Mm -hmm. um, because it's like, I love writing for Lily and I love like being in a writer's room, but ultimately I would love to like host my own show. Yeah. I would love to um, like have a Netflix special, things like that. So I, I have to remember even when I'm like exhausted, because like I said, it can be really exhausting, just like writing sketches or writing things like that. 
um, I have to keep, and I haven't been the best at balance of like, I haven't posted on Instagram. I'm like, I'm on the half. Uh, so I should do that soon. Yeah. Um, but I'm trying to like maintain like, okay, keep up your Twitter presence or keep up because at the end of the day, it really, especially now in like the current culture we're living in, and you yeah. know, as a comedian, yeah. um, you have to just like keep up your personal thing because you really can like build your own brand and your own stuff and mm-hmm. like take off that way more so than like getting a credit from someone or things like that. So yeah. I'm trying to put the focus on that a little bit more. Um, well, all that's great. I just have one question for you before we wrap up. Right now you yeah. have a job that's very coveted by probably a lot of young writers, writers our age, older writers, anybody would be would kill to be writing for late night, especially for Lily Singh, right? So yeah. you have a great job. It's probably a dream job of yours, I'm sure. Yeah. What yeah, sure. piece of advice would you give to writers out there who have not maybe land landed their late night gig yet? Um, my advice is always do everything that comes your way. Yeah. I think there's like a tendency to be a little bit more selective in mm-hmm. the sense of like if you get a packet for something and it's like someone that you're like, oh, I don't really like their voice, or someone yeah. you're like, I don't really see myself right. I always tell people just do everything because even if you don't get the job every especially like packets you know late night packets is what Mm -hmm. they call them which is just like an application for a job essentially or like a packet of jokes like every single one prepares you for like the next gig I got this job with Lily but this was probably the first time I've ever like heard back um from submitting a packet I've submitted maybe like 20 packets over the years maybe mm-hmm. like 15 and 2020 20 alone right um for like sometimes for like the same show and getting rejected twice is very fun um but <laughs> I always say just like it doesn't matter who unless like it's obviously unless it's someone who like goes against your like if Donald Trump had a late night show and you were like listen <laughs> I, don't I heard he's hiring <laughs> yeah exactly if it like goes against like things that you strongly believe of course. Than that if it's just someone who you're like oh I don't necessarily know if I love their humor or whatever like just do it keep writing mm-hmm. um like literally do a twitter account keep putting out jokes that way mm-hmm. it really is like a numbers game as much as it is talent it really is like just continually continually honing it and yeah. honing your craft for sure well Vanessa I really appreciate you sharing your wild night story. I thought it was wonderful. I thought it was fun. Um, And you know what? Sometimes the stories on here get a little debaucherous, which I'm all for. Uh, That is why this show is called Wild Nights. But I also really appreciate like a wild night that had nothing to do with drugs and alcohol and sex and just a night that was like, this shit was crazy. (laughs) You know, this is what I try to bring to the table. I, was like, I loved a it. Fun story. I absolutely loved it. And I'm glad you made it out of the cave okay. safely. I'm glad Big Man made it out of the cave safely. I'm glad Hannah is healed. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Yeah. What a crazy time. <laughs> we love Hannah. Um, so thank oh. you so much for doing the show. And I wish you the best with everything. I know that, you know, a few years from now, we'll be watching you on late night too. You will have your own oh. show because uh, you're a funny lady. <laughs> Girl. Thank you. Thank you so much for doing the show, Vanessa. Absolutely. Thanks for having me.